Hey guys, welcome to my channel. My name is Jade. Today we are finding out what does it really take to become a successful YouTuber. Here's the thing, you guys, you know on this channel, I'll give you tips and tricks on how to grow your account, how to build a brand, how to be an influencer. But throughout my entire channel, I've learned there has to be something more than just Instagram hacks and YouTube tutorials. Like there's something internally that these successful YouTubers have in common that make them who they are. And that's why today I am going to interview my friends who are entrepreneurs, people successful online. Now, yesterday, if you guys saw, I made a video about sociopaths to see if I was one. I think I just basically concluded that it doesn't fucking matter what your percentage is. It's just more of like, what personality traits do we all have that make us a little crazy and make us stand out and at the end of the day, make us extremely successful. We're gonna dive right in and I hope you guys enjoy. Hey Jade, how are you? Um, I just wanted to say thank you for recommending Feel Like an Artist. The book's really good. What you been up to? Hey, I'm actually currently editing this YouTube video. Um, it's all about sociopaths and seeing if like YouTubers have a certain personality to be successful. It's about to get spooky. Okay, yeah, I, I can see what you're saying. But th the thing is that there's many normal YouTubers too, you know, like we kind of like put a lot of attention to the craziest of the craziest people nowadays. But it doesn't mean that you have to be crazy to be successful. You know, there's plenty of normal people on YouTube that are getting successful too. Like look at Ryan, etc. Then look at like what do they have in common. That's when you really find what the necessary qualities are for YouTube success. <laughs> Guys, I'm texting Ryan to do this call, but he just said as I called him, hold up, I'm pooping. Let's try again when he's done with the bathroom. Hi! Hi, what's up? Hi, Brennan! Yo, what's up? Hi! Hi! Is you, do you think YouTube is an on and off switch? Like, when you're on the camera, do you feel like you're on a personality? Or is it always like, you know, tell me more about creating content versus your real life. Is it a difference or do you think you're pretty yourself? Yeah, I think this is an important question. I think a lot of people that watch YouTube kind of expect that YouTubers are always the way that they are on camera. Well, I like to compare it to like musicians and stuff going on live shows. You have to like go crazy mm -hmm. if you're trying to perform for thousands of people, which is essentially what we do on YouTube. You know, it's not like we're talking one-on-one -on -one with Someone, which right. is totally a different situation, right? So you're trying to just capture someone's attention for like 10 minutes at a time, which nowadays, I feel like that's really hard to do. So you almost have to put on this front. Like I put on this front, like entertain people as much as I can, because I can't just like be myself and be drowsy and like, uh, <laughs> be like a guys. Like everyone's gonna click off the video, you know? So. We're gonna call up the second person, Brennan. One of my close friends and just really smart. I want you to introduce yourself and most importantly, tell us a little bit about your business. Yeah, so basically I started like a sock company when I was like 13 years old. I on like the Nike League socks with little box things on the back that are like 15 bucks each. I don't know if you can tell us how many socks do you sell? So like for 2018, we're projected like 1.8 million. Wait, so you said 1.8 million? Yeah. That's. Awesome. How old are you, by the way? 18. Okay. <laughs> I want to ask you, when you are working on your business, is there an on and off switch? Like, is there like a time where nine to five, okay, I'm working on this and then after I can relax, or are you always on, like thinking about your business? I feel like there, it's probably healthy to have that on and off. You're just always thinking, right? And so like, I will try to launch something as fast as I can and then prove if it works or not really fast. And if it does, I keep running with it. If not, I sort of like move on to the next thing. So it's like constant prototyping and launching. Wow. Um, to see what works. But I don't know, like, I just love that because I would rather make less money on something and entertain myself. Like, for me, it's definitely like, a good money. Like, numbers always motivated me, but I realized after I hit him, it wasn't really about the numbers. It was mostly about the process of, like, just trying to reach that goal that made me excited when I achieved them. It's mostly having a big goal that I'm able to pursue and just be, it's just something to keep me, keep, keep trying to keep myself entertained. I'm gonna go text the last caller. I'm calling Haley Pham. She's a YouTuber with 1.4 million followers. Guys, I'm a huge Girly Pop fan. A little bit about Haley. I've been actually watching Haley's videos for a long time. I've been a Girly Pop since sixth grade. All right, guys, I'm moving you guys to my couch because I've been filming for like three hours. And uh, make sure you guys actually follow me on Instagram if you want to see a continuation of maybe my personal life because not only do I do digital marketing tips, but I kind of like showing stuff that I'm going through and just being personal. Well, I just want to say thank you so much. If you're watching this video right now, I can't believe you're here. It's fucking a long video and if you're so far liking this video if you could like this video and comment let me know your thoughts 
I read every single comment and I can't wait to see what you think. Time to call Haley. I want to know because right now you're ongoing like close to 1.5 million subscribers. Congrats. Um, I just have an audience that I know for a fact, if you guys are watching, like they think once I hit 100K, I'll be happy. Then you hit 100,000. If I can only have 500,000, I'll be happy. Like, do you feel like sometimes you've set these milestones to yourself and once you hit it, are you happy? It's like at this point, like you're about to hit 700,000. Like what's next for Ryan Train? Like numbers always motivated me, but I realized after I hit him, it wasn't really about the number. I never felt like that feeling of disappointment once I did hit a milestone because I always knew my goals past that or like mm. why I wanted that milestone. So for me, like, one of my biggest goals right now is to buy my mom a house. So hitting milestones is nice because it makes it seem like that might be more attainable. But actually hitting that milestone was never the goal in the first place. Mm. So when I hit like a million subscribers, I wasn't like immediately sad after because it was like this build up to get to a million. It was just like a, oh, my goal is to make X amount of money to buy my mom a house or be able to travel or to be able to like put my money into better things. So it was never really about milestone. Because most of all, like whenever I see a comment that says like, oh, this made my day or, or something like that, I'm sure you can relate. Like, yeah. that's so much more valuable than like a number on the likes. Like yes, the engagement. Excited. Engagement is yeah. more important. <laughs> By the way, I want you to know, thank you so much for opening up on that. You don't know how much people, they are so, they think, oh, these big YouTubers, they don't have fears. They don't have anything. They don't feel anything. <laughs> They're sociopaths. Yeah. Like, you know, and I want to, because like I was watching that uh, Shane Dawson and I just don't like how it makes us me feel like monsters sometimes. Hmm. But if that was your goal and like all you saw was that number, then obviously you're going to be disappointed when you right. get there because it, I don't know. It's just so weird that like a number on a screen that people would think that would, I don't know, transfer into happiness because it really doesn't. It's just like right. what you want to do because of that number. When did you realize you could make this YouTube thing like a full-time job? Like, did you realize, wow, I'm getting maybe my, when I, I remember when I got my first YouTube paycheck, I was like, whoa, I am balling. <laughs> <laughs> when, did, when did you realize for you? Uh, but really, I didn't notice that I could actually live off of it until I hit like 20,000 subscribers. Mm -hmm. And at the time, I was trying to monetize in other ways beyond just AdSense, because I think if you're, if you're only relying on AdSense, then you're kind of cutting yourself short. Mm -hmm. And I think the question then is just like, how can I impact your lives in a different way other than just my content? And that's when you're able to really like take care of other people, impact others, and, and make a living for yourself. So I would say about 20,000 subscribers. Essentially, tell us a little bit about your brand. Oh, yes, here we go. So Neptune, I started senior year of high school. That was like a year before I started doing YouTube. And basically, I sold like all the bottles in school that I could. It's a net, it's a water bottle company, essentially. <laughs> this is one of them. Uh, link in bio. No, Swipe but, up. <laughs> um, basically, it started off as a water bottle company. It's transforming into more, which I'll get into later. I just didn't know how I was going to sell them. Mm -hmm. So I was like, well, I guess I could start a YouTube channel. Maybe a few dozen people will watch and I could sell them there, like um. online or something. So that's why I started YouTube, was to sell more of these bottles. No, yeah, I, I was telling them, like, people are like, when is it ready to start, a, like, when is it right to start monetizing? Here's the thing with Ryan, yeah. like, he he built the audience first, he built the community. Think about the consumer before you even push out a product. Like, brands won't come yeah. up to you until you have that community. So focus on consumer, consumer, not product, product. Yeah, until you have that demand first. When did you realize, I don't know if you can say numbers, but when did you realize, Hoop Swag, your sock company, could be actually a sustainable career. It was making you money and profitable. Whether what, what point was that? Because here's I, I get asked this a lot. It's always like hard to think about because like you built this thing for five years and you're never like, oh, this is how exactly I did it, right? Like you ask me year one to five, I actually have trouble explaining how I got from there to there. <laughs> so we got shut down on Amazon, which was like a large amount of our sales. And this is like December sixth, December sixth. I want to say we're doing twenty to thirty thousand dollars in revenue a day. Like we were doing massive amounts of revenue, and we get shut down. Amazon was kind of a pain if you're a seller. Like they just shut you down. Don't tell you why. Yeah. And basically six days later, and I was just pissed. Like I, I got shut down on my birthday. I was so mad. Um, oh my god! It, it got turned back on, but like I was like, hold on. <laughs> I just paid two thousand dollars for a legal email. Like I think this has to be legit. At this point. Am I going to go to college? Am I going to pursue this? Like, what right. am I going to do? At that point, I was kind of like, okay, I'm gonna like kind of put my head down and just work on the company. When is that point to change? Yeah. I, I legitimately think it's a gut feeling. Like, I think yeah. a lot of people have trouble just trusting their gut and overthink a lot of things. And I, maybe I've just developed a knack for trusting my intuition, but like there's some stuff still to this day like that I would be like, I'm not sure, but I'm just gonna go with my gut and- There was a slow transition to where I started not putting as much effort into high school and like going to college when I started putting more effort into my YouTube channel and brand deals. That's kind of when I knew I was like, 
clearly my priorities are in this so-called business. And it was really when I had all these ideas past YouTube that I was like, all right, this is like something I could really take to the next level if I wanted to. Cool. And just for the audience to clarify, primarily right now, you would say you don't want to rely on AdSense. Brand deals give more income than AdSense. Is that true? It honestly depends on the month. Mm -hmm. Like if my views are really good that month and I only did one brand deal, then AdSense is going to be more. Mm -hmm. But if views were okay and I did three brand deals, then it's going to be the brand deal. Oh. Like really so it's really depending on the market. Like yeah. what do, how much attention do you have that month and what can you do with it? Yeah, for sure. Do you think school aligns with a career in your path? And I think you answered that, but if so, what advice would you give to someone who thinks I need to drop out to be successful? Or do you think you can handle both? Like, I feel like you're managing both. How are you doing that? Right. Um, I think that the only reason I, or like for someone like you or me is because our careers were kind of starting in high school, but if it's not, and you're just like in a rush to start it, mm. I'd say that there is no need to rush it unless like the market for that particular whatever you're doing is like super good at that time. But I think you can handle both. The only thing for me is it's kind of an emotional toll because I'm constantly like, you know, just hating my life when it comes to school. So that's kind of what I've been struggling with in terms mm. of that. But for some reason, everyone wants me to graduate and they don't really give me any reasons to. They're just like, you just have to. I don't know. If you drop out and you fail, they'll call you stupid. But if you drop out and you succeed, they'll call you smart. And they're going to be your best friends. And suddenly they're like loving you. Yeah, you know what I mean? Right. You have to understand, Brennan, you didn't go to fucking like an MBA degree. Like we're both actually just like straight out of high school. I'm a dropout. So a lot of people have the opportunity to live with their parents, right? Like I think that's so beneficial. You don't pay for it. You don't pay for food. Like yeah. at least your living costs are super low. Yeah. And then also like, you do have to live on your own. Like you can live pretty cheaply. It's all about like your lifestyle and how you want to live, right? Yeah. But like you could probably live for a thousand dollars a month if you had to. I like what you just said though. Like you just said you can actually live on a thousand dollars a month. People think you need millions to be happy. Like no, like you only need what you need. And I think people aren't afraid of, first of all, their egos in the way. Like they want a certain lifestyle that's pretentious and puts on a front, right? So yeah, exactly. I like what you mean. Like living with parents, like using the bare minimum, just hustle, bitch. Like it's <laughs> Okay, I'll, I'll spill a little bit of tea. So, um, basically, right now there's like a bottle company which competes like with Hydroflask and Xwell, which are the big ones. But like we would kind of want to gravitate away from that industry and more towards solving the issue of single-use plastics, whatever that means. So, I yeah. see that as diversifying perhaps your product line, but I'll leave it at that. What's next for Hoop Swag? I have a couple high beast people who love sneakers and shoes. I just want to plug your brand in and see what's next because I think people are fascinated with what you're doing. Next in customization. Um, and what I mean by that is like a lot of the time if you want custom stuff, right, you're going to run into like minimum orders. Like you have to order 10, 15, whatever it is, and it's still really expensive. Um, or if you want one, it's coming from China and it's 30 days out. And so I've been working on developing the process to basically do online, whether it's customizing the entire, whatever product you're selling, right? I mean, you can add names, images, all sorts of stuff, and then have it shipped to your house like two to three days. Okay, I don't know if we can share, but like, let's talk about brand deals. You just launched merch. When you say you had different ideas past YouTube, were you thinking about like starting multiple businesses? Like, what was that oh, yeah. thinking? What is that? Oh yeah, I literally in my journal, I have like a list of 10 ideas that I want to do after high school. And that's why high school feels so limiting right now when I have so many big ideas that I could be executing right now. But you know, there's so many factors in the way of that right now. But yeah, it, I definitely want YouTube to be like a side gig at some point. Still putting as much effort in, but it wouldn't be my main source of income. Thank you so much for opening up and I hope you have the great rest of your day. And <laughs> okay, Brendan, thank you so much. I actually really appreciate you opening up. It was really cool. I hope you have the great rest yep. of your day. Just first of all, thank you, Brennan. Some of you guys know, but I have app and right around the first development stages of it, I was telling Brennan how fucking scared I was and I couldn't, I had to like lock myself in a room like physically just to do work because I was so scared that if I went outside my room, people would judge me. I kind of get it now. Like I'm looking at having a realization. Like I get why some people that are successful, not saying all, maybe you have this personality. You're not going to keep a stable relationship with friends and family and because you have to do your own shit. And I know there's a healthy balance. I can't wait to actually get my dad's take on this because there's for sure evidence of me not having stable 
healthy relationships with my family. I just don't want to live and promote a label on people. I think it's super unproductive to call yourself, to call your other friends, oh, he's really annoying. I said this before, but if he's an extrovert, I'm not going to talk to him. Like that label just divides us as individuals. I agree 100% with what Haley's saying. Like it's draining to do what you want to do, but everyone else is telling you and society is pressuring you to go into a traditional path. What I'm going to do is take everything I've learned today from my friends and to summarize what I've learned and kind of give you guys an analysis of what it really takes to be a YouTuber. I'm gonna do that actually in part three. I don't know if you're enjoying this. I'm not trying to like milk my series or be Shane Dawson, but I generally believe that what I'm about to share in the next episode might shock you guys. I kind of want to break down brand deals. I want to break down how much money I make, influencers make, just stuff that no one really shares online. So with that being said, thank you so much for watching this video. I learned so much recapping everything. Maybe sometimes we have to have lack of empathy. Maybe you have to be isolated and not have too many friends, but I never throughout this video want you guys to think you're a monster. If you ever have these personality traits, just don't identify yourself. It's just not productive to call yourself these things. Shout out to the winner. Comment on this post to be featured in the next episode. And let you guys know that part three will be linked below. I'll catch you guys in the next one. And thank you so much for watching. Hello, Dad. <laughs>